We are continuing in our study. Our study is called Jesus, our great physician. We are in the fifth study of this. Why? I'll tell you why. Jesus is our healer. Give God glory if you believe that. He is Rapha. He is the God who heals. He is the God who can heal every sickness and every disease. He can heal you spiritually. He can heal you emotionally. And oh yes, He can heal you physically. There's not a sickness, a disease, a sin, a problem that He cannot solve. There's not a sickness that He cannot take away. Because nothing is impossible with our great God. Amen. Today's sermon title is this. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Can you say that with me today? Do you want to get well? Remember that sermon title. It sounds like a silly question to ask someone who's sick. But you'll see in a minute what happened to someone that was asked this question. John chapter 5. Verses 1 to 6 says these words. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was a pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked them, Ton Khan, would you like to get well? Sazak Tan. outside of Jerusalem, near the temple. And it was a pool, a pie. Kais Bushela's Bethesda. The word Bethesda means house of mercy. It was a place of mercy. The Bible says the blind, the lame, the crippled would gather there. And one day as Jesus was passing by, he sees a man who was sick, paralyzed, an invalid. And the Bible says for 38 years, says Nasfaloka Komanus, I go Christo leste, I push lelezek divano. Do you want to get well? That's what Christ asked him. Now today in this church, in this building right now, there's people that are sick. There's people that are sick physically. There's people that are sick emotionally. There's people that are sick spiritually. There's people here today that are dealing with issues and problems. There are people here today that need a touch from God. Can I get an amen to that? There are people today who are dealing with worries. They're dealing with fears. They're dealing with addictions. In the same question that Jesus asked that man that day, Jesus is asking you today, do you want to be well? Say amen if you want to be well today. Now in the King James Version, Jesus asked the same question, but, but it's given a little bit different understanding. Jesus asked the man, not if he wants to get well, but do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole, Pusheleso Cristo? And the word whole means healthy, unbroken, undamaged, sound. 
What we need to understand today is that Jesus just don't want to heal you physically. More important, Jesus wants to heal you spiritually. Physical healing is temporary. As great as it is. But the greater miracle that God can do is heal you spiritually. Physical healing is great. But what's more important is that we are well spiritually. Much more important. Now the question is asked the man, do you want to get well? You see, some people today in this church, in this building, you've been holding on to your trouble. You've been holding on to your problem. You've been holding on to your fear. You've been holding on to your addiction. You've been holding on to your sin for a very long time. So long you've been holding on to it that you don't know how to live without it anymore. It's become part of your life. It's become your identity. Nakomanu says Nasfalo left paralyzed for 38 years. A very long time. And Christ had to ask him, do you want to get well? Some people are holding on to an unforgiving heart. Some people are holding on to pride. Some people are holding on to bitterness. And they don't know how to live without it. They can't let it go. Some people can't get rid of their addiction. They might claim they want to get rid of it. But the truth of the matter is, they don't know how to live without it. Am I talking to anybody today in this building? Some people can't imagine. How could I live without fear? How can I live without worry? How can I live without my anxiety? I can't. Yeah, I want to get well. I want to get better. But I don't know how to operate. I don't know how to exist. I don't know how to be without it. Abaske kangari, mangas guji mos, mangas ajuti mos katarodel. Abaske altar, and we come and we say, Lord, I leave my burden, I leave my sickness, I leave my problem at the altar. And before the service is over. We pick it up and put it back in our hearts. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? So it sounds like a silly question that Christ asked. But it's really not, is it, church? Jesus is asking you today, do you really want to be well? Do you really want to be made whole? Do you really want to be unbroken today? Do you really want to be healthy today? Do you really want to be made strong today? Do you really want to be made right today? Do you really want to? Because that's what Jesus asked this man. You know, some people... Panajun, they stay so long in prison, it becomes part of their life. That when they're released from prison, they don't know how to act outside in the regular world. So, Jean Narozno, Choron Karan, I Panajun Pale, Pale de Jean Nigobia, because that's where they're safe, that's where they're comfortable. Unfortunately, church, there's so many people today that the only place they feel comfortable is living in their sickness, in their disease, in their place. 
that God wants to deliver them from. So let me ask you a question today. Do you really want to get well today? Say amen if you do. Amen. Then here it is. Number one. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Look what verse 7 says. When Jesus asked them the question, do you want to get well? Look at his response to Jesus' question. I can't, sir. The sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the waters bubble up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Now the reason why Bethsaida's at this pool of Bethesda, because there was a, 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 a paramecha, there was a story, there was a religion, there was a belief, there was a superstition that an angel from heaven would come down and he would stir the waters. And when the waters would bubble, the first person that would get in the water would be healed. Did you guys ever hear that story before? Come on, did you guys ever hear that before? Okay, well, great, but there's no evidence that that's true. So the guy is asked the question, do you want to get well? I can't. Every time I want to get to the water, someone's already there, already ahead of me, so I can't get in. He's more concerned about getting in the water to get well. Instead, he's talking to the great physician and he's not looking at him. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, Shavagali Church, listen to me. Sometimes we always look for healing from someplace else and we forget the God that we serve is the great physician, is the healer. And instead of looking for something else to heal you, go to the God who created the heavens and the earth. And he tells them, I want to get well. I want to get better, but there's a problem. But there's an issue. You might say today, I want to get better, Lord, but every time I try to get right with God, Every time my family pull me back. Every time I try to forgive that person, he always does something else to get me more nervous. Every time I quit smoking, I quit drugs, I quit drinking, I quit gambling. Something happens in my life. People get in my way and I end up going back again. But hey, you don't know this woman. You don't know so good. Bingo. You have no idea. <laughs> Always excuses. Always excuses. Let me tell you something about excuses. If you look for one, you will find one every single time. Every time you'll find an excuse. And let me share this with you today. The day will come, my brothers and sisters, that you and I will have to stand before God. And when we stand before God, Bachama, every excuse in the book will not work. We cannot sit there and blame everybody else for our, for our faults. We will try to blame everybody, but Janessa Motolodel, I'm not asking them, I'm asking you. And we have to give an account for our own lives, for our own actions, for our own deeds, for our own words, and for the things we have done. You guys agree with that today? Amen. That is why our excuses are meaningless when we stand before God.
Yek manus penama rak divano yek varan. It's hilarious. But hey, the reason why I have a serious gambling problem is because my father used to gamble. So God is not going to hold me accountable for it. It's my father's fault. Church, every one of us are accountable to God for our actions. We need to stop playing the victim card and start owning our responsibilities. We need to stop blaming others and say, yes, Lord, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Number two, obey God's word by faith. Number one, stop making excuses. Number two, obey God's word. Look what John chapter 5, verse 8 and 9 says. Jesus told him, stand up. Pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. We must respond to the Word of God. And let me share this with you. What God commands, He always supplies. If God says you can do it, He will give you the power and the ability to do it. God will never force you to do anything. But He will always empower you to do it. Peter. Peter te You know what Jesus told him? Come. Come. And Peter obeyed the voice of God. He obeyed the voice of Jesus. And he stepped out in faith out of the boat. And he was able to walk on the water. Understand something today, church. If you want to see the power of God of your life, if you want to see the miracle of God in your life, the only way it's going to come is when you obey the voice of God. When you obey the word of God and you obey the voice of God, you put yourself in a position to see the power of God in your life. What has God commanded you? Take command that Durodel. What has God called in your life? What word has God spoken in your life? Maybe it's to forgive. Maybe it's to repent. Maybe it's to serve. Maybe it's to give. Well, Jimmy, you don't know my life. I got so many problems, so many issues in my life. Very difficult for me to serve God. Very difficult for me to obey God. I'm just going to read you some names here. Maybe some of them are familiar to you. Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses was a murderer. Gideon was afraid. David was an adulterer. Elijah was depressed. Jonah ran from God. Job went bankrupt. Peter denied Christ. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy was too young. And Lazarus was dead. But you know what? Every single one of them had something in common. They obeyed the voice of God. And if you obey the voice of God and obey the word of God, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you've done, regardless of where you've been, God can still perform a miracle in your life. God doesn't look on where you was and where you came from. He looks on where you are right now. Stop dwelling in the past and look right now to the future, Lady de Blesa. And we need to start obeying the voice of God. How many want to see the miracles of God in their life? How many want to be healed? How many want to be set free? Then start obeying the voice of God and obeying the word of God.
You will never be sorry. You will never be sorry obeying God. Never. What would have happened that day? Oh Lord, I can't get up. Oh Lord, I've been here for 38 years. I can't do it anymore. Oh Lord, I don't believe I can stand. What would have happened? You want to know? Do you want to know? Nothing. Donut would have happened. Zero. Understand something very carefully, please. God always blesses your obedience. Always. So learn to be obedient to the voice of God. Learn to be obedient to God's word. And see what God can do. And in number three, and I end here, don't go back from what God has healed you from. Don't go back to what God has healed you from. Naja papele katar la turodeo. Naja papele katar skupi sa. But after Jesus found him in the temple and told him, Now you are well. So stop sinning, or something even worse will happen to you. Stop sinning. Sastardemtu. Wortu sardemtu. Khalademtu. Then stop sinning. Namai traisar anobezach. Penanis kodel. Now the Bible does not tell us. They prove the truth. A dog turned to vomit. As we 
stand today as an act of faith. We want to be made well. Not just on the outside, Lord, but more important, on the inside also. Heal us, Lord, from the inside out. as white as snow and purify us Lord through your blood I pray Lord that we would never return from where you brought us but that from this day forward we would go forward with you that our desire would be to serve you that our desire would be to please you that our desire would be to honor you every day in our lives. Let us never be satisfied. Never be pleased. Never be happy. They bold us properly. Katartu andana mendevla. Numa swako je jez. Te jaz angletusa. I thank you, Father, for your love, for your grace for your mercy and for being our healer. And today, Lord, we all say thank you. Put in Mansa, thank you. Das tu barimos and Isako fellows. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.